Hello and welcome to another Photoshop video tutorial. In this exercise I'm going to teach you some advanced techniques for batch processing your images. One of the tips you're gonna learn today is how to batch process your photos to match a certain length of the longest axis of the image and thus conforming it to an imaginary square. The second tip I'm going to show you is how to do relative borders as opposed to absolute ones, which is going to be a pretty nifty technique to bundle up with the uh, conforming imaginary rectangle thingy. Okay, so let's get started. Open up the Actions palette. If you don't have the Actions palette visible on the screen, go to Window and choose Actions. You can also hit Alt F9 and that will bring up the Actions palette to the screen. Okay, um, now how I'm, how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to start recording an action and then I'm going to apply it to both the images showing you the errors that most people make by doing this. Okay, so I made a group or, or a folder of actions. If you want to make a similar one, just hit this icon over here and then make a new action. And we're gonna call this um, advanced, oopsie, caps lock is on, advanced resizing action and hit record. Okay, and once you hit the record button, Photoshop immediately started recording everything that you do. And I'm gonna start by doing a record of an image resize that most people use. And I'm gonna try to resize both images so that the longest axis is 640. And in this case, that would be the height, so 640. Hit OK. And stop the action. Now, as you see, Photoshop recorded that the image size, the height is 640 pixels with constrained proportions. So the width is proportioned to the height. Okie dokie. So, open the other image and hit play. Now what you'll see is that when I go to image, image size, this image is 960 by 640, while the other image is 427 by 640. And as you can see, Photoshop uses image resize to only constrain to either width or height and thus you cannot use this tool to resize the way that we want to. Okay, so now drag the image size command to the trash can and let go. This will delete the action and click on the record button and now go to File, Automate, and Fit Image. Now what this will do is it will create an imaginary rectangle or whatever, and it will constrain every image that it gets within those set amount of pixels. So in my case, I want to constrain it to 640 by the longest axis and thus 640 is in both input fields. Hit OK and fit image is going to be here with 640 by 640. Now nothing changed because I already resized this image correctly but not this one so I'm gonna step backward and I'm going to play this action. So go to image, image size 
and now you see the width is 640 by 426. Okay, so on to the next tip of this tutorial, and that would be adding borders to your advanced resizing action. And we're not just going to add any border, we're going to add relative borders, which will adapt to any image size that you're going to put in this action. Okay, so let's say that we want a 3 pixel border. Just hit record here so that it records what we do. Go to image and choose canvas size. Now, if we want a 3 pixel border, we actually have to add 6 pixels. So, 3 pixels on either side, and that would be 33, and like this. And as you see, three pixels were added to the image. Now, hit stop and let's put the same action on this image. This image was already resized, so it's in the same proportion as this one. And now, let's do the canvas size. Ouch! Now, what happened is that the canvas size also measures in absolute commands. Now, width is 433, and this adapts to this image and this image alone. So, what we want to do is delete this canvas size, hit undo here, and hit undo here, and click record. Now, go to image, canvas size, and this time click on relative and the numbers will change to 0 and now let's add 6 and 6 pixels hit OK hit stop click on the other image and click play and now as you see both images were apported the same amount of pixels in the border Okay, this concludes this week's exercise and I hope that you learned something useful out of it and I also hope that these two tips are going to save you loads of time especially if you do a lot of batch editing of photos and you had to do two sets of batches one for the portraits and one for the landscape shots Okay, this concludes the tutorial, and till next one, have a nice time. Bye-bye.